Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be checking out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rat King and Vernon 2-Pack from NECA Toys. That is right, my friends. The latest of the TMNT animated figures from NECA Toys has begun hitting Target's shelves, and we're going to get ourselves a look at Rat King and Vernon. This is one I've been really excited about, specifically because I've always been a big fan of Rat King, but this is also a nice notable set because we're getting some of these other side characters, and I think that is so much fun. And as you can see, just by looking at this window box, there is a slew of accessories in here, a lot of episode-specific stuff, just like we've seen in this line, so this is gonna be really fun to take a look at. So great window box packaging, follows the motif of everything we've seen so far, some nice new um, illustrations on the front to kind of match up with the old animation. And when we flip that around to the back side of the box, we've got some photography of the figures within, showing you some of the other figures which are hitting stores right now, which by the way, uh, totally the Triceraton with the Roadkill Rodney seem to be hitting targets again. So keep a lookout for those as well, which is really, really cool stuff. All right. Let's go ahead and dive on into this box and check out the figures within. All right, we got Vernon and the Rat King outside of that box. Let me start by bringing in the tape measure. You guys can see that Vernon is right at six inches tall, whereas Rat King is pushing towards seven. He's around six and a half, little over six and a half inches tall. Um, so he is a bit taller and he's a little beefier. You know, when you scale him with the turtles, he actually towers over the turtles, very similar to uh, what we've seen with Shredder and the like. So that is really cool. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with Rat King. We're gonna move uh, creepy old Vernon off to the side here and we'll start with the Rat King. He was one of my favorite villains. Of course, one of the villains that came over to the original cartoon series from the Mirage comics, had a memorable vintage action figure. This guy looks terrific. Um, really does a great job of capturing the look of the character from the animation. You've got the green wraps kind of wrapping around his face, the spiky blonde hair. You got that kind of mummified wrap thing going around his body, but he's more because he's supposed to be like homeless, like living on the streets and in the sewers with the rats. Um, so you got like the stitching all around the body and everything. And of course, this continues the trend of almost giving him that cell shaded look with the way he's painted. You can see like his back is shaded and everything there. Um, and that is just to kind of fit in line with that whole animated look with these. Uh, but the paint deco is really nice and clean on this guy. I think it looks really, really great. And the figure feels nice and solid. So let's go ahead and talk about the articulation here. So that head is on a ball joint. Now you will notice he's a bit hunched over. Like his neck is coming forward a little bit there just to kind of give him that little bit of a hunched over look. But you can still roll the head all the way around. You can move it left and right. You do have those hinge like joints uh, at the shoulder so they can move forwards and backwards and outwards. You can swivel at the bicep. You have double joints at the elbow there. So there's a good range of movement. You got swivels and hinges at the wrist there. Um, the torso is on that ball, so it can roll all the way around. It can move left and right. Um, I, I don't know if it's supposed to turn at the waist as well. You can see I've got a little bit of a separation going on there, and I haven't been able to really pop it back in place. Like, it's, it's always showing that separation, and it's stuck. It doesn't turn on mine. So maybe I just need to heat it up and try to turn it, or maybe it's not supposed to. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, I can turn the upper body just fine, but that waist is super stuck on my figure. So the legs are on ball joints, and this is another place where, first of all, I do want to show you, I've got a little bit of paint rub from like his brown diaper thing, <laughs> where it's kind of rubbing off on the green underneath. Now that's super not noticeable when his legs are posed like this, but when you kind of spread the legs out, you can see that paint rub. Also, uh, while I was rotating this around, I did pop this off the ball socket earlier. Um, it's not duplicating that, thankfully. So I was able to pop it back into place pretty easy. It didn't break or anything like that. And it does seem like it's functioning pretty good now. So I'm almost wondering if it just wasn't attached all the way out of the packaging. But yeah, you can see I'm actually getting quite a bit of paint rub just moving this around. So this is made of a softer material here, of course, to allow for that articulation. And unfortunately, it looks like it's flesh tone underneath the paint, which I don't know why it's not molded in green or something, uh, because the paint is flaking right off while I'm posing it around and it's exposing that. And that is really unfortunate. I, I really don't like that. 
Um, otherwise, we got double joints of the knees, which are very tight on this figure, which is really nice. Uh, then it doesn't look like we have anything, like no swivels at the boot cut or anything, but then the ankles just move forwards and backwards, and they rock side to side. So the articulation's pretty decent. Um, I got a little bit of <laughs> paint chipping on the joints, which is pretty common with these. Um, so the only place I really find that being a problem is on this softer piece there uh, at the pelvis, because uh, that paint is flaking off pretty badly so that is definitely something we want to watch out for that's really kind of disappointing otherwise the articulation feels nice on this guy he feels solid um you know i'm not having any problems posing him or standing him or anything like that um so yeah that functions pretty well now he does have a ton of accessories including some interchangeable hands so right out of the box you can see i've got him with like these really great kind of open hands with like the fingers curled up these are great for posing around but he's also got a pair of gripping hands and he's got a finger pointing hand and of course it works just like on all the other figures we've seen in this line you can just pop the peg right out of socket you can put the new one on in place and that way you can change the poses around a little bit so adding to that we also have three rats which is perfect um love getting the rats and of course these are all posed in ways so that you can actually place them on the rat king which i think is incredible so you can see this one's like perched for a shoulder and it's got the little tail kind of wrapped around so look at this we can actually like wrap that tail around his arm and he perches right up on the shoulder there which looks incredible uh we've got another one that looks like he's kind of crawling down the shoulder so he kind of fits over on the other arm he just kind of sits up there but he sits really nicely up on the shoulder and you've got another one that's perched that is really great for placing in his hand uh, especially for those open hands there so you can have three rats just kind of sitting all over the figure which is a really great look for the Rat King. In addition to that, he does come with a mutagen canister, something we've seen a lot. Uh, but one of the things I really love is that he's got this little holster with three of his soda can bombs. This is awesome. So this will work where you can just kind of put it over his arm there, bring it over his head so that it kind of goes across his body. And that way he can wear his little uh, bandolier strap with his soda can bombs. And you can use those gripping hands so that he can hold onto those. And his last accessory is his flute, you know, because he's like the Pied Piper. He definitely used this uh, for his first few appearances in the cartoon series. He would use this to kind of control the rats or control Splinter and stuff like that, which is really great. So again, the gripping hands will hold on to this. It's a little loose, but you can still fit it in there. And it's still a really nice inclusion for the Rat King. All right. So that brings us over to Vernon. Man, this guy just looks incredible, okay? And I know he's like one of the random human characters. He was important in the show. He was there a lot, but you know, he doesn't seem as exciting as like the mutants and the big bad guys, but I got to hand it to NECA because this guy looks fantastic. So once again, all the paint seems real clean on this guy. He's wearing his signature pink shirt, his blue jeans, his white sneakers. Um, that head sculpt is fantastic. Really doing a good job of capturing the look of the character, bringing him from animation into 3D. Uh, he's got the same kind of cell shaded look going on with like the shading on the backside. But yeah, all in all, this guy looks really great. You can see the tie uh, is made of that kind of more flexible plastic where it's actually hanging off the shirt there. Uh, the watch is the same. It's actually just kind of over the wrist. Uh, really fun looking figure. So his articulation is as follows. He does have a joint at the top of the neck and the base of the neck. I will say the top is a bit tight. Like usually when you go to turn it, it's like turning the whole neck, but it is possible to move the head independently from the neck as well. Uh, you've got those same like hinges there, the bald like joints of the shoulders, forwards, backwards, outwards. Um, you can see that his rolled up sleeves are like separate pieces, but he does have double joints at the elbows. I mean, look at that. Great range of movement there. You can also swivel up here uh, at the at the biceps. So yeah, great range of movement there. Uh, he doesn't seem to have anything in like the torso because of the sculpt of the shirt, you know, but he does have that joint at the waist where he can roll all the way around. It can move left and right. Uh, you got the ball like joints there at the thighs. The legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards. You can swivel there as well. Um, this is made of the same 
same kind of more flexible material just like Rat King's pelvic piece is. It doesn't seem like I've got the same problem with the paint rubbing off, which is good. Also, it looks like the shirt is that way. Oh, you know what? Look at that. It does have the hinge joint under there. Wow. So the shirt is a softer material. I didn't even realize that. Look at that. You can actually pull his shirt up a little bit there. That is really impressive. That functions really well. All right, so you got the double joints at the knees, just like so, real tight knee joints. And then at the ankles, you can move the feet forwards and backwards, as well as rock them side to side. Um, this guy feels nice and solid. All of his joints feel good. He stands really well. Um, and you know what? This guy is actually really fun to mess around with because he does have some interchangeable hands. Um, he's got these two like open hands, and then he's got one pointing finger. So just like with the other figures, you can pop the hands off at the wrist. You'll probably get a little bit of paint chipping on that peg inside. Uh, but this is where things get really fun for Vernon because these hands are so expressive that it makes the character so much fun to just kind of pose around and just get some really fun or really cocky type poses out of him. It works really, really well. And then he also has a Channel 6 news camera, which is really cool looking. You can see it's got the 6 on the side. It's got the handle on the bottom here. Got the big lens with like the very animated uh, kind of shading work going on there. This is really cool. So you can get him to grip it with uh, the gripping hand. And with the double jointed elbows, you can actually get this sitting up on his shoulder. And you can even get it up kind of close to his face to make it look like he's filming with it or just holding it on his shoulder. It's really impressive and again it adds to the overall expressiveness and just the amount of fun poses you can actually get out of Vernon. Okay, so this is where things get even more fun for this figure because if you do think he's just a boring old human character, well the good news is he has interchangeable parts to turn him into the were rat version of Vernon, which comes from one of the Rat King episodes. So let me show you how this works. Uh, in order to swap this out, instead of pulling his hands out at the wrist, you're actually gonna pull his entire forearm off just like that. So it is worth noting like that rolled up sleeve is just kind of sitting on that same peg. So it's gonna be a little loose there, but then you can take these were rat arms and plug those onto the socket in its place. And then we can also swap on the head. So again, the neck is where you're gonna actually pop this off. So the whole neck will come off of a ball joint in there, just like that. And then we can take the were rat head and pop it on in its place. Now, the first time you do this, it is gonna be really tight. You may even need to use some heat from a hairdryer to warm it up to make it a little easier to pop on that joint. Uh, in fact, I've already done that once and it's still a little hard to get squeezed onto that ball joint. But once you get it all assembled, this is what you end up with. Uh, it's amazing how well swapping those parts out uh, does such a great job of making this character look exactly the way he appeared in the cartoon when he was turned into a were-rat. Um, again, really great detail going on there. Um, I love kind of like, again, that shading work. I love like the big sideburns he's got. Um, and it even has an opening and closing mouth. Look at that. You can open up the mouth. You can see the tongue on the inside. Again, adds to the overall experience expressiveness of this figure. Uh, this thing is fun. It is really, really fun. Like a lot more fun than I ever expected an action figure of Vernon to be. All right, guys, it's comparison time. So I've got to show the Rat King alongside his vintage action figure counterpart because he's such an iconic original figure. Uh, it's really cool looking at him standing side by side with this newer, uh, more cartoon accurate version of the character. And you know what? There is a toy of Vernon in the vintage line and I thought I had it, and I apparently don't, so I'm totally failing you guys on a comparison time of uh, the new Vernon alongside the vintage one. So instead, here he is standing alongside the vintage Burn and Irma. Yeah, I know, total fail. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So there you go, my friends. That is a look at the brand new Rat King and Vernon 2-pack. All in all, I really like this one. I think the biggest flaw in this entire set that I came across was the badly 
chipping paint on the pelvis area of my Rat King. I mean, the way that the paint is rubbing off so bad in this area and the way it's chipping off to reveal like, um, you know, kind of like his flesh tone underneath, uh, you know, that is a real bummer and that worries me a little bit about posing him around a little bit more. So that's definitely something to be cautious of. Aside from that, I think the overall sculpt, the details are fantastic. I think the articulation is really nice. The accessories are awesome. I really like the wear rat thing for Vernon. I hope that the inevitable Irma figure we get also has wear rat parts so we can, you know, kind of complete that ensemble for that episode. I think that'd be really cool. So yeah, all in all, really fun set that continues to bolster out the ranks of the animated TMNT lineup from NECA Toys. So as I said, this is just now starting to show up at Target stores. Some folks are already finding it. I would give it a little bit of time to roll out. Hopefully, this is as well stocked as Krang and the Baxter and Splinter set seem to have been, uh, so that it's easier for everybody to get a hold of this. It does seem like NECA has made strides to increase production on these, um, so that is definitely a good thing. I do want to give a very special thanks to the folks at NECA Toys who did provide this particular set for this review right here. Guys, thank you so very much for watching this video, and until next time.